Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, today's mini session here during our ATA 2020 uh, virtual event. And joining me today is Pam Grasmus, who is the uh, director of telehealth at Locum Tenens. And she's here to share with us in our session um, titled Locum Tenens Integrates Direct to Consumer to Provide Much Needed Access to Specialty Care and share with us a little bit of uh, Locum Tenens experience in uh, addressing the craziness that we've all, you know, are, are still living through with regard to uh, COVID-19 and the reason that we're not all face-to-face -face and, and pressing flesh this week at uh, uh, ATA in, in person. But uh, Pam, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, and just to, to let the, the audience know, we are recording this session so that um, you can share this with uh, you know, friends and colleagues that may not have been able to attend today. Uh, but to, to give a, a quick summary, Pam, um, you know, access to mental health uh, professionals and specialists has, hamper, has been hampered because of COVID-19. Um, there's a limited number of professionals in underserved areas of the country and then with all the lockdowns and such that creates even greater uh, barriers. So in this session today we are going to uh, talk through a little bit about Locum Tenens approach to addressing those issues and, um, and with that I would like to begin Pam with maybe you can give us a a little bit of background on, on locum tenens and, um, and, and what the pandemic has meant to you. Absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you so much for having me. Um, so again, yes, Pamela Ergavish, I'm the Director of Telehealth for Locum Tenens. Uh, we have been um, a, one of the number two staffing companies in the country for many, many years, 25 to be exact. Uh, we place MDs, NPs, and PAs all across the country in all different sections uh, of, of healthcare, so anywhere from behavioral health to anesthesia to surgery. What we noticed the most was the mental health care crisis. Um, and so many of those patients, especially when COVID hit, were losing access to seeing their psychiatrists, uh, their mental health providers. And we were getting calls left and right from our clients who were employing our providers. Now, some of them were already you know, utilizing telehealth. We do have that ability and have set that up for them. But many were sort of still waiting, as we know, right? This, this sort of launched the telehealth revolution. And so these clients came to us and said, in a panic, can't see my patients, don't know what to do. Even if I could bring them into the office, I'm not going to go to the office. I don't know how to get it set up. My staff can't come in. And so we really knew that we needed to come up with a better solution. How are we going to connect our providers with our patients in a, you know, in a secure platform that also brought them not just the video piece, but the scheduling piece, the ability to you know, pull in x-rays, to use their EHR, to make it very, a much more systematic um, you know, uh, uh, solution for them. And many of them had initially come to us and said, look, you know, we've gone on free platforms but it's just not working for us. And so we, that's really sort of how we got pulled into this process. Um, in fact, and Mark, you and I had talked really before the true wave of COVID had hit, when we sort of saw things, we were like, gosh, there seems to be, we need to connect people. We know that some people are really having struggling getting to the office. They wanna be seen at home. How can we do this? And so it just created the perfect opportunity. So what I can tell you is that uh, let me just speak a little bit more about how uh, VitalNet and Locum Tenens came together and created a solution uh, for, for moving forward. So COVID-19 hit, we had all of these issues, people were panicking, they were using all different kinds of platforms. The government came out and said, you know, you have carte blanche, which was fantastic. But we have a lot of longtime clients um, who are using not just one or two providers, but 12 providers, 16 providers that are located all across the country that we fly them to these spaces and they fill in or step in or live there for three months or six months, which is what locum tenens is. We needed to change the way that this was going to look. We needed to keep our providers safe and in their homes and we needed to be able to reach the patients appropriately. Uh, so we were able to work with VitalNet and really build a customizable system that was going to work for not just local tenants, but for each one of our individual clients. 
And I think that that's what the biggest piece of direct to consumer, um, the importance of it is. So it, it's really not just pulling a product off the shelf and saying, you know, uh, this is going to fit here and we're just going to, we're going to kind of make it work. It's me being able to sit down with a client and knowing them intimately for the last several years because we've worked together and say, you know what, I know that you struggle. I know that half of your patients do not speak English. Um, let, you know, before we used to have, you know, we used to have an interpreter in the office. Now that's not an option. So now we're able to actually link you to an interpreter inside of our application at the touch of a button. Um, that was definitely one of sort of the, the biggest, I think, sellers for many of our clients because so many of them had patients that use English as a second language. Um, the other big piece of this was the scheduling piece. So we were not able to, for, for many of our clients, some of them are on EHRs, some of them are not. You know, when you look at behavioral health practices by and large, they're not the huge conglomerates that hospitals are um, or huge primary care clinics. Many of them actually are sort of still using hybrid. They may have a bit of a scheduling system. They may have a bit of a, maybe a lab system to come in, but they're, a lot of their charting is done still on paper. So we were able to then also build in the opportunity to put in sheets that they could fill out and then uh, print at a later date and put into charts that they could share with primary care facilities. Their, uh, their front desk staff was able to log in and schedule patients within the system so that the providers were able to see who was coming, who was in the waiting room. Uh, they were able to get notifications right to their cell phones which I thought was fantastic. Um, I'm a provider myself. And so I know that it's really great to know that my next person's in the waiting room and I get a ding and I know that, you know, it, sometimes I can lose track of time when I'm on the video. So it is, it, for me, direct to consumer became what can I really do, not just for the client, but what is the experience going to look like for the patient and for the provider? And I think, again, being a provider myself, that was a big piece of this, um, mm -hmm. was you know, uh, knowing the frustrations, having worked with, I've, over the last three months, I've worked with several platforms because different people use different things. Um, yeah. And I wanted something that was more configurable, more tailored, uh, that I could call, you know, when, when a system opens it up, it has their background on it. It has their, um, you know, their logos. Everything looks appropriate. And so as a patient, when I log in, I'm like, oh, I'm in my practice. I know where I'm going. I know who I'm seeing. This is not going to be completely different. We had to bring education and, um, and I think a sense of comfort to our patients. And especially as a locums company where my providers that are placed there are not permanent staff, um, it's even more important for me to make sure I'm delivering that proper experience and that it, they are conforming to the look and model of the, you know, the, the client that they're working for. That's awesome. And oh, yeah, you're back. I might just back up. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Pam, for jumping in and uh, keeping the show moving here. Um, one of the, the hazards of the virtual trade show is... Right. The, uh, you got to think on your feet, right? New, new tools, exactly right. But, uh, but that was awesome, Pam. Thank you for that. And, and it, that's really important and valuable because in many of the conversations that I've had, uh, particularly recently, as, as people are really now thinking seriously about, okay, how do I get from the, you know, oh, poop moment of COVID-19, throw up whatever works and, and make it happen, to how do I make this scalable and, and sustainable? Uh, what's come to light is that when folks, you know, cast out the net to say, how do I do telehealth? They don't recognize that there is a stratum of, uh, you know, telehealth solutions, right? That mm -hmm. starts with components. It's, you know, pure video conferencing, for example, is an important component of telehealth. And in some cases, having that and marrying that with the EHR is going to be enough for people. Right. Uh, you know, the next stratum up is, is kind of the space that, that we fit in, which is the, uh, the, the platform space, uh, where exactly the things that you're talking about, all the, the additional capability, you know, comes to bear. And then above that is just turnkey services, which is what Locum Tenens uh, ends up delivering. And, and the technology completely becomes transparent to the end user. Uh, and, and basically they're looking to fill care gaps and such. 
And, and what I found is people who are looking for each of those different tiers in their heads only talk about it as I need telehealth. Correct. Uh, so they end up spending a lot of time vetting a lot of people uh, that really are not prepared to align and, and meet the needs of, of what it is that they're actually looking to do. So I think that's an important conversation to have and, and raise awareness that, um, you know, think about uh, where the fit is for, for what it is you're looking to do. Now, Pam, there was some surprises for you in, in this uh, experience with COVID-19. Um, you know, when, when we first got started on this journey, it was hyper-focused on, on the behavioral health side because of the need for these patients to continue to see their providers and get those script renewals and such. But you found out that there was more to it than that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We were, once we, people knew, we, we had, we work with clients all across the country. Um, and we have uh, over 200 plus telehealth programs that are stood up and uh, that was pre-COVID. Um, Post-COVID, as everybody knows, everything exploded and, and we were really, really busy. But what we found was people who had never wanted to explore telehealth before were now very anxious to get into the arena. Um, we have neurosurgeons, pediatric surgeons, um, we have uh, orthopedic uh, practices that are, we're looking to, you know, follow up with patients. And it was not enough. I think the interesting part when some people would get on the phone with me and ask or talk about direct to consumer, what their definition of direct to consumer is, is very different than what mine is. Mine is a full patient experience. I think for some people, they just think it's connecting the patient and the provider with the patient being at the home and the provider being someplace else, whether it be within the four walls of their office or you know, wherever it may be. But it's not just a telephone call and it's not just a video call. It really is so much more than that. And so that's what they were struggling with. They're like, everyone keeps telling me how great telehealth is, but I feel limited. Um, I'm toggling between nine different screens. I get cut off. I don't really understand how to, you know, I'm getting to my patient, but if they have a connectivity issue and you know there's no support line, they didn't know what to do. So it was really bringing together and, and sort of helping them understand what they needed. And I think looking forward, so many people are like, well, there's free options, there's these options. You know, at the end of the day, I think that you do need a bundle of services. If this is something you're looking to really turn for your practice and make it a permanent piece, you need something that integrates or has the ability to integrate with your EHR, right? Um, that has a scheduling piece that you're able to show, you know, um, different uh, exam tools that you can build in different opportunities for patients, especially when they're waiting for you. Uh, for behavioral health, it's really key. Surveys, how are you feeling? Um, you know, uh, scoring techniques for orthopedics and for neurosurgery. Uh, they wanted to have pain scales. They wanted to have um, some visual tests to see how people were doing. It was very interesting. And again, everything being customizable. That is a very different experience for a patient than I'm just logging in and getting a video chat, which is what we did initially because it was necessary and that's how we were connecting. But now I think telehealth needs to step up the game to, to continue to prove that we do, right, that we deserve and we can deliver the same care that I can give you in the office. Excellent. Very good, Pam. Um, and I, I believe we're at the, uh, the point where we're to open up the floor for some, some Q&A here. If there's any uh, questions from the audience with regard to um, uh, uh, you know, content that's been discussed here so far. And, uh, and I think we've got a uh, question, Pam, with regard to uh, EHR integration. Uh, and I think it's around um, how do you decide when to integrate with EHR versus, um, you know, use the telehealth platform as standalone. You know, what's, what's the, the, the yeah. argument or use case for each? I think that the, what we have done is it, it really depends upon what the client is looking for, what they're trying to achieve with their patients. Um, if they have a really solid electronic health record, they've been decently tech savvy. Um, it is really actually quite simple to have the platform open where you're seeing the patient with the scheduling and chart in your EHR. 
if they want seamless, so in other words, when you schedule a patient, when you, for billing, all of that, that's when we really pull into a full integration. Mark, I would say that the majority of the clients that we have worked with together, um, they usually start with just trying the platform, seeing how they like it. I think that that's important. We recognize that people are using you know, uh, valuable dollars to, to, to look at telehealth solutions and we want you to be happy with it. So you tailor that to what you want. If it works for you and it's excellent, then it's very easy to integrate down the road um, because there, there is a, a more substantial cost to that. Very good. It looks like we've got a, uh, another question. Um, how is the adoption of telehealth with clinicians? How do you overcome issues of adoption, if any? Um, I would actually say that the majority of the providers that I work with have not had an issue with adoption. Uh, if anything, what we've seen is the, those providers who own private practices reaching out to us to say, Hey, listen, you know, I've worked with you as a locums before, or I heard, you know, through a friend that, you know, you've got this, how do I stand this up? What can I do? Um, the nice piece is that as you expand a telehealth practice, if you didn't think you could do it before, we're able to walk you through steps and show you exactly where you can maximize telehealth for the potential. So for example, we have a client who is a neurosurgeon. Um, he has a private practice and obviously operates within a hospital. Um, he does a tremendous amount of consults for a lot of other smaller hospitals in his area. That business was really unable to be done during COVID, even though people were still having crises and having issues. And so this enabled him to still connect with those people and now actually has extended his reach even further. So I think that you know, the, the, the abilities, what you can do is how you shape it and talk to the provider about it. Um, we have probably had a handful of providers who a system has come to us and said, we're going to adopt this. And the providers have said, I'm not loving it. You know, when COVID's over, I don't wanna do this anymore. And I think that a big piece of that was sitting down with them and just being very honest and saying, tell me why you don't like it. Tell me what you're struggling with. You know, I can't make a connection with my patient. I don't think it's the same. I miss hands-on medicine. And I don't think any of us would say that telehealth is the end all and be all, that it can replace being in the office. But it does have, it does have its function. And I think it does enhance and can make things better. And so once we had those, I would say tougher conversations to say, look, we don't, you're, I agree with you. I would not use it for this but look at all these other things you can accomplish. Look at how much you can improve your day, your time management skills. Um, and in truth, if you have more touches with your patient, the outcomes do improve. And so we, we, you know, we, we, we've had some really meaningful conversations with, I would say, providers who were less than excited about putting it together. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And we, we've got one more uh, for you before we end up running out of time. Um, but uh, this is with regard to uh, locum tenens, the, the audience members asking, it sounds like uh, locum tenens covers uh, quite a bit of turf in terms of uh, uh, specialty coverage. You know, what, what are some of the services that locum tenens can help, um, particularly in this case, it's rural uh, hospitals uh, in terms of accessing care? We do. We actually work with a tremendous amount of rural and critical care access hospitals. Uh, we have 60 specialties uh, that we staff and that in, and for all of those specialties, we have MDs, NPs, and PAs. Uh, we bring uh, uh, providers to facilities, both boots on ground and through telehealth. So you have those options. We do hybrid programs as well. Uh, sometimes we bring full staff. So when I say that, it means that I bring a team of MDs and NPs and put them into a spot. Um, sometimes we recruit or we help to recruit local staff that can come to you. Um, and so we have, we have a multitude of ways that, that we can do that. Uh, as far as specialty lines go, we cover everything from um, every surgery and hospital medicine, ICU, pulmonary and critical care to outpatient with primary care endocrine, cardiology, uh, and of course, uh, behavioral health. We uh, are the, for every locums provider that is placed in the United States, um, one, so one of two, one is from locumtenants.com. 
uh, we are the number one psychiatric locums provider. Awesome. Well, Pam, thank you so much. And thank you to the audience for uh, joining us here today. Uh, again, I'm Mark Noble for uh, VitalNet. I don't think I formally introduced myself at the beginning with some of the uh, challenges that we had getting started. But uh, thank you all for, for bearing with us through the, uh, the technical hiccups. And many, many thanks to Pam for uh, sharing uh, your experience, your insight. Uh, always very valuable, always a pleasure. And if anybody needs to, uh, to follow up, has further questions uh, you know, for, for either Pam or, or me and uh, with regard to the direct consumer programs discussed here today, please feel free to uh, reach out to uh, info at vitalnet.com and, uh, and we'll get the questions routed appropriately. Thank you very much, everybody. Fantastic, thanks, Mark. Have a good day, everybody.